Hello comic fans, here's Earl Grey, and that's what I've read the last week or so. Yes, I read all these nine thick softcover trades with about 400 pages each in about a week. So that's the first thing I want to say. If you start reading Naoki Urasawa, it's most likely you want to continue with the story, since he has a way of pulling you into his net of ever-increasing plot nets and knots and twists. And yeah, this is the German so-called perfect edition with matching covers which enable you to puzzle them together, like so. This is a pretty good match since Urasawa's story is a jigsaw puzzle in itself. A mystery with lots of characters with different social backgrounds and agendas, interwoven through secret connections that are slowly but impactfully are revealed to the main protagonists and therefore to the readers as well. The main hero, and yes, he is a pretty true blue hero, our main hero is Kenzo Tenma, a Japanese neurosurgeon in Germany and obviously one of the best. He is an expert in his field who is able to make the difference. And that is the reason why he is ordered to perform surgery when the Major of Düsseldorf is hospitalized. But Kenzo Tenma is in the middle of a very critical surgery that he denies to interrupt just because some, in quotes, important politician needs his help. Well, you can figure the outcome of that situation. The Major dies, which is a huge blow for the reputation of Tenma's hospital and for Tenma's uh, career aspirations as well. But the other surgery was successful. Tenma's patient survives. A young boy who was or becomes a serial killer. The monster of the title. Leaving Tenma not only with the broken shards of his career, but more importantly with the guilt of having saved a serial killer. And not only that, he soon becomes the prime suspect who has to go underground to investigate on his own. That's the basic setup that is established very early on, which serves as the basis for a huge tapestry that reaches back and forth in the timeline and tells its very own version of that time when we thought the Cold War had ended. But I'm really cautious to keep this video spoiler free from now on, because Monster is a comic that can be spoiled when you know too much, in contrast to, let's say, Jose Munoz Alex Sinner, that can't be spoiled in my opinion, since it's not so much about the story in capital letters, aka the plot, but it's about a portrait of the human beings involved in the society. And one can read Munoz, for an example again, again and again, because that's the content for the most part and not so much the actual plot. With Urasawa it's pretty much the opposite. The plot and the unsolved mysteries are the carrot that keeps you going. Of course his characters are very well portrayed, interesting and some of them even very emotionally touching. And of course it all works in a very well researched setting of Germany before and after the fall of the uh, Berlin Wall. More about that later. But these characters are all first and foremost just cogs in Urasawa's very well oiled storytelling machine. Without the overarching plot, most of them would be just cliches, their lives just vignettes. To be clear, this is not a bad thing. The whole thing worked for me perfectly. Some of the characters really got to me and it's been a while since I've read that kind of a long story in just a couple of days. And no, that's not because it's a manga with lots of decompressed action, which is not true for Monster. Monster is not really decompressed. At least not always. Sometimes there happens a lot on just a couple of pages and even with a good amount of dialogue. So the whole series needs time, but it's a page turner nevertheless because it reads just incredibly well. And it is a good entry drug for manga newbies as well, since the way of storytelling and the art is not so different from the western comics that we are used to. In fact, 
uh, would it not require the backwards reading order from right to left, it could be very well put into your shelf with Western graphic novels. Just a pretty long graphic novel, for sure. Most notably, Urasawa is very restrained in the facial expressions of his characters. For the most part, this works very well for me, since I just can't cope with the overdone facial expressions of, mus uh, of most mangas. There's still a bit of this big eye style going on, but Urasawa uses it for the most part to depict young female characters. For the price that these look a bit the same and like the usual female manga, in quotes, pin up. Well, I don't say that the use or the absence of exaggerated facial expressions is a good thing or not. I'm just used to the more restrained approach in Western comics, so I'm glad that Urasawa goes that route for the most part. And what Monster made extra interesting for me is, of course, that it plays in Germany. Well, quite a bit in the Czech Republic or respectively the former Czechoslovakia as well, but for the most part in Germany. And overall, it is a pretty true portrait of Germany and German society of the times back then and even now. The depiction of a deceiving, idyllic rural village becoming a claustrophobic hell I'm talking about the town of Ruenheim, just for those who are in the know. Again, I don't want to spoil anything. Well, this part of the story is of course very overblown and unrealistic. Especially there is gun control in Germany and even in rural villages you won't find too many people who could really handle a gun. Just saying. But the underlying tensions and mistrust between neighbors that's, of course, a pretty accurate portrait of rural hell that you can find, maybe not only in Germany. But since I spoke about certain unrealistic, or at least questionable assumptions, the biggest is, of course, the assumption concerning the power that our title-giving monster has about other people. So, this idea felt initially like a mere mind game by Urasawa, but the longer you read the comic, the more real and possible and uneerie it becomes. And it raises some serious questions about our human condition, etc. So you can read Monster not only as a very gripping crime saga on, let's say, eye level, but on some more meta level as well, if you will. So, it's a pretty fantastic series. I give it um, 9 out of 10 teacups overall. Still, I have to mention some gripes. Very minor gripes, really. More smart ass know it all, actually, but interesting nevertheless. Because in some little points, I thought Urasawa was simply wrong or at least not accurate towards the German background of its story. For an example, he uses a lot of very old-fashioned pre-names in the story, names that would stand out today and that would have stood out even decades ago, like Johann, the name of our monster. Urasawa seemingly picked that name when he looked for a very common name, which has some significance for the story. But Johann, Johann is just not a common name. Johannes, for an instance, would have been a better choice but yeah, if you're saying now he's splitting hairs, I probably am. Another thing is that our, in quotes, Japanese doctor is always asked where he comes from and is always addressed as the Asian guy. Well, Tenma is a guy that studied at a German university and obviously speaks fluent German. 25% of us Germans today have a background in migration today, so it's really not that big of a deal if you have some Asian or whatever looks. Still, and that's another gripe, it doesn't matter how you look, but I don't think it's possible to escape the tracing or manhunt by the police for a relevant amount of time over here. And it was not much easier three decades ago, at least not without disguising yourself. And to end with a little fun observation, I don't know if it's fun, but I have to 
tell you about it anyway. Um, one of the side characters, uh, Martin, digs in his ear and blows this dusty earwax from his finger. The thing is that this is a rather a thing of people with an Asian heritage, the dusty cerumen, I mean. Since Europeans just get sticky yellow fingertips when their digging was successful. One of the fun facts that you can learn here. Asians have rather powder in their ears, while Europeans have greasy wax within their ears. Don't know what's better, just saying. But I couldn't pass that one, obviously. Anyhow, thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.